Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to the show today. Now it is Sunday, so you know what that means. It's time to go around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So on the docket for today, we have Major League Baseball, Bank of America, and Capital One in a bit of a love triangle. Goldman Sachs is actually checking in. American Express is getting fancy again. And then we actually have a new chase card on the horizon at some point this year. So it's time to greatly over-speculate about what it will have. So if you want to do that, then go ahead, press the subscribe button. Let's get to work. Now, first things first, let's bat lead off with Bank of America. Yes, pun intended. Now, as you know, we've been looking at Bank of America for a few different reasons. I will first talk about a Bank of America refresh. So this has been rumored for quite some time. Bank of America alluded to having a new partner reward structure coming, but we didn't have any details until now. So let's take a look at their new options for Bank of America rewards. So here we have it, a Bank of America revamp. Now they're calling this their Partner Rewards Program. So what you can do is enroll your Bank of America credit or debit card into this program. And then from the looks of it, this is going to allow users to pick between the Partner Rewards or the card rewards that the card normally comes with. Now, partner rewards differ between cards. I think the actual partner is the same, but the type of rewards you get or the amount of the award is different. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, the first partner is Shell Gas Stations. And then, I, as I understand it, you can change your reward choice once a month. So if you look on the left-hand side here of, of this slide, you can see two examples. So you can see on the debit card, of course, there are no rewards. Um, obviously, it's a debit card. But now, the one on the bottom here, we have a little bit different. Again, you can see the valuation is different. Now, I don't know which card this is. I mean, it looks to me it's gonna, probably going to be the unlimited cash rewards card, which would scale to 2.62% back on everything if you were in the top tier preferred reward system. So we'll assume it's that. Now you can choose to get 2.62 back on every dollar spent, or you could get up to 10 cents off per gallon. Now what's interesting here from this picture is, again, it just says the 2.62 is back on every dollar spent at Shell. So I, I take this to mean that you know when you're changing to your partner rewards, you could still get 2.62 back on everything else, except you'd be swapping out the 2.62 for this 10 cents back at Shell specifically. That to me would make the most sense because it wouldn't make sense to give up, you know, all of your 2.62 for just a gas station perk. So, you know, overall, I think it's an interesting take. I mean, obviously for the debit card, if you're a debit card person, it makes sense because you're going from no rewards to some rewards. Um, for everyone else, I would probably say just do the math and see what you what you normally get. You know, with Bank of America, it's a little bit interesting because there's no transfer partner type deals or anything like that to, you know, think about. Now, again, depending on the card, this could make sense. So I would just run the numbers. What do you do on gas a month? What comes out better? 10 cents off or the 2.62 back? I mean, gas has been super expensive as of late. So, you know, but overall, it'll be interesting to see how Bank of America expands this and what other partners they bring in. I, you know, I would like to see some optionality, especially between the cards, give you more of a reason to have different cards, especially in the annual fee cards. It might be nice to see better rewards slated for those. But of course, let me know what you think about these new partner rewards down below. Now with that, we move on to another Bank of America story. So if we've gone to the Bank of America site as of late, you've noticed that some cards are MIA. Well, one of the cards is missing was the MLB card, the Major League Baseball card. Now this card is a carbon copy of the customized cash card. That's the red one. And now we know why it's missing now, because MLB and Bank of America have actually broken up. So let's take a look at this. So MLB and the credit cards, they're moving the MLB portfolio. So Bank of America, they've parted ways. And the current B of A MLB card holders, important here, those cards will be converting to unlimited cash rewards card. That card gets 1.5x on all purchases. This will happen sometime mid-March of 2022. So where is America's pastime moving? Well, it is moving to Capital One. Now, as far as what is that card going to look like? Well, details will be announced once we have a collective bargaining agreement is reached. I think that's in bet between baseball and the players. I'm not 100% sure. I don't really follow baseball that closely. But anyways, this is interesting for a few reasons. Number one. Bank of America had recently updated their terms and conditions for cards, and you, you know originally you could have multiple of the customized cash cards, which is helpful. They limited now. It sounds like it's limited, potentially limited to just having one version. They they have a, a the word may in there, so they may or may not enforce it, but. 
That's that. So we like the MLB card because it was another product and gave you a way to get another customized cash card, basically just with your favorite team's logo on it. Now the real interesting thing here is that they're switching those cards. They get the multiple, you know, your choice of multiplier category, basically to the unlimited cash cards. That kind of sucks in my opinion. I see why they would do it, but. It sucks because when the unlimited cash rewards came out to entice people to get this card, Bank of America was offering um, product change offers. So basically, like you could get two hundred dollars. Basically, you get a sign up bonus again for product changing a card you didn't use to this unlimited cash card for about two hundred dollars, which is not a lot of money, but it's uncommon to see sign up bonuses on product changes. Normally, that's not a thing. So you know, for them to force change you to this kind of sucks. And they could also change you to the customized cash card, which is a one to one equivalent. But they're choosing to give you the one point five x card. So if this is you, you know what you could do is very simply put. I think you could probably apply for the unlimited cash card now if you wanted to get a $200 sign up bonus. I mean, it's not overly that big of a deal, but you know, it is a little a little lame, I guess in my opinion for lack of a better word, for them to choose this card over another customized cash card. Now, as far as what MLB and, and Capital One are going to do, well, we'll just have to wait and see, but you know, it's another move by Capital One to kind of strengthen their credit card arsenal, so I'm hoping for another cashback type card, um, very similar to what we had with uh, Bank of America. But with that, we now move to Goldman Sachs and Marcus. They're actually strengthening their foothold in the credit card game somewhat by acquiring the full GM financial um, credit card portfolios. This is the General Motors card lineup um, that they used to have. I think believe they were bidding on it with Barclays, and they finally won it out. So let's take a look at this. So the GM card portfolio, again, it was Goldman Sachs. They outbid Barclays for the portfolio. This was originally with Capital One, so I guess we're playing musical chairs today. Um, Goldman Sachs paid about $2.5 billion for the portfolio. So um, what you need to know here is Marcus by Goldman Sachs will begin servicing the GM accounts on the 22nd of February of this year. You can use your old card until your new one arrives. Cards will begin arriving you know, in that February date and continue through the first week of April. Now, very important here, you will keep the value of your unused earnings even after the transition, so that is great. And going forward to manage your account, you'll just go through Marcus.com instead of um, Capital One. Now, here you go, GM card portfolio. This is what it's going to look like now. So they have my GM rewards. You can see what you get there. There's going to be a GM business. They'll start accepting applications on the 18th of February. And there's going to be a GM extended family card. That'll start accepting applications on the 18th of February as well. Now, overall, I guess these cards aren't that big of a deal. But, you know, a few of you have mentioned it. So now that we know for sure where the home is and what other cards are coming, I throw the story in there. It's great to see that they're keeping their card rewards alive that you've already earned. Now, Funny enough, this card portfolio seems like right up Barclays Bank Alley is like the king of co-branded cards, or anyone without a home, so to speak, tends to end up with Barclays. I mean, however, I don't mind the fit with Marcus. Marcus by Goldman Sachs, in my opinion, is kind of a, a branch of Goldman Sachs that they started, you know, obviously for retail banking to try to get, you know, more non-investment types and more average folks, I guess, for lack of a better word, people like you and me, but they haven't really done anything with Marcus to my knowledge yet. So putting these cards with Marcus is interesting. I also think Goldman Sachs has probably learned a lot about credit cards, you know, from their partnership with the Apple card, things like that. So, you know, these cards could get more interesting over time, but more so we could probably see Goldman Sachs or Marcus start to get further and further into the credit card space, potentially, again, building off of this and what they've learned. So with that, we now move to American Express, and this is a story we've tracked for a little bit of time now, but American Express specific to the Platinum card, not the Charles Schwab or not the Morgan Stanley one, just the personal vanilla Platinum card. They've been um, showing off designer versions, so we have two of them, so let's take a look at that. So again, these are the two designer cards. Now, the new card styles are now live. So you can choose a design application if you're a new applicant, or you can request a new card design for existing card holders. So down below, you have the three that you can choose from. I mean, the two on the left are you know the new ones, obviously, and then the one on the right is the regular design, which you can still choose the regular design. So if you're, if you're applying for new, I think it'll give you, you know, your option again for the regular platinum card. If you already have a platinum card, I believe you follow the path that you would follow in the app to request a new card and then there will actually be an option to instead of request a new card request a new card design and then you can choose now overall you know 
I think it's fine just because it doesn't cost us anything. You know, yes, a lot of us would like American Express to add more valuable, more substance behind the card. But again, I don't think this is targeted at people like us. I think this is targeted, you know, people who are like into this sort of thing. The Not even the millennial. Whatever comes after millennial, Gen Zers, I guess, is what it would be. You know, folks who are maybe like the NFT crowd who wants these custom pieces of artwork. Now, these artists are a big deal. From what I understand, they've sold, you know, lots of artwork for, you know, millions of dollars, I think. So, you know, they're not... Not nobody just again we would like more substance I guess is the best way to put it but I do know some of you are out there who are into these cards and if you are that's great let us know down below which one you got maybe throw up a picture on Instagram or something and tag the channel in it because um, I would love to take a look now as far as am I gonna switch one mine or out I don't know. Part of me says you could switch it out. Everyone should switch it out just because there's like an off chance that somehow these become collector's items. I, I, so I don't know. It's, it's a long shot, definitely a reach because we don't know how many they're going to issue or how many they're going or how long they're going to run this promotional for. So I'm thinking about it just from that space. You get it. And it'll probably still be pristine because you don't even carry your platinum card with you. So there is that angle. It's a reach, but you know, it is free. So I might pick one up. So let me know down below which one I should pick up if I do it. Um, so that now we can't talk about Amex without satisfying, of course, the House of Diamond. So to close this out today, there is not a rumor, but actually I think confirmation that Chase will have a new co-branded credit card coming sometime this year with Instacart. So let's take a look at this. So Chase plus Instacart, they already have a partnership, so they're expanding it now. So if you're unfamiliar, Instacart is like an online grocery delivery service. So the card in question will be a MasterCard World Elite, which is interesting to see them expand their relationship with MasterCard. Now the ETA is sometime this year, and then the press quote here is, this will allow consumers to earn accelerated points on purchases across the Instacart marketplace. Um, so right now they're in about 700 national, regional, and local stores combined. So overall with the Chase story, one, biasly, anytime we get a new card potential, I like it because it gives me something to talk about. Now overall, I don't really expect this card to be something that most people here are interested in. I can't see it earning ultimate reward points and none of the co-branded cards do. Um, you know, and you'd have to really use Instacart a lot to, to make this worth it, whatever it is. But, you know, I'm still interested to see them expanding their co-branded partnerships because, again, more cards are good. Just because the co-branded Instacart doesn't help me out doesn't mean the next co-branded partnership won't. So overall, I think that's a good thing, something to talk about. And if you use Instacart or you're a fan of it or if you use the, the rewards that Chase has now for it, let us know down below what your thoughts are and what you would hope to see on the Instacart cart card what would push you over um to pull the trigger on this so anyways guys if you like this one drop me a thumbs up down below if you found it particularly interesting then consider subscribing to the channel again posting content just like this every monday wednesday and friday and of course right back here every sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance my question for you as always let me know what other stories you saw in the news in the week that was in credit and finance love to get your thoughts on it see what's got your eyes interest we can chat about it in the comments below but anyways guys that's going to do it for this one as always thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you on monday